Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. To raid or not to raid, that is the question. Today, we are testing two one terabyte PCI Express Gen 4 NVMe SSDs on the AMD X570 platform in two configurations, on the chipset lanes and on the CPU lanes. And yes, there is a difference. I will have an explanation of that and how they differ and what the various lanes are here in just a second, and then we will get to the benchmarks. Now, I have already reviewed one of these drives, link to that in the description below. If you would like all the details of PCI Express Gen 4, how it compares to Gen 3, how a single drive performs, and those sorts of details, check out that video because I'm not going to repeat that here to try to keep this short and sweet. And today, we're only focusing on a two drive configuration. The test bench configuration is also the same as the last video, so I won't repeat it all. Instead, I'll stand over here and put a bunch of text up here for you to read if you want to read it, or go watch the original video. A word about PCI Express lanes, chipset versus CPU, how many you have, and how they work. To do that, I'm going to stand over here a little bit, taking these boxes off to give myself some room, because I'm going to put some text up here on the screen. The Ryzen 3000 series of CPUs, and it's worth noting this is different for different generations of chips. The older Ryzen, Intel, they're all going to be different. We are only talking about Ryzen 3000 series, otherwise known as Zen 2 CPUs here, and we are not talking about the APUs. The 3400G and 3200G, those don't count. Only the 3600 and above. Installed on an X570 motherboard, come with 24 PCI Express 4 lanes on the CPU and 16 PCI Express lanes on the chipset. For those of you playing the home game, that is a total of 40 PCI Express 4 lanes. That sounds really impressive, and it is in many ways. There are a couple of caveats to those numbers, however. Number one, you actually can't use all 40 of them. Four are reserved for the interlink between the CPU and the chipset. So the CPU actually only has 20 that are usable. 16 go to the graphics card or split 8x, 8x on a board like this if you want to split it between two, uh, two slots. Four go to the first M.2 slot. Usually it is configurable by the motherboard manufacturer, but they virtually all go to the first M.2 slot. And then the last four go to the chipset and thus really aren't usable since you have to have a chipset. Now the 16 on the chipset are usable, however, there is only a four lane link between the CPU and the chipset. So if you install multiple high speed devices, such as multiple PCI Express 4 NVMe drives on chipset lanes, all their data has to be rerouted through just a four lane link between the CPU and the chipset. So if you're moving a lot of data back and forth, installing two, three, four drives on the chipset is not going to give you 16 lanes of bandwidth to the CPU. It can give them bandwidth directly to each other and allow you to simultaneously connect multiple devices, but not necessarily use them all at the same time. There is, however, a solution. As I said before, the 16 primary lanes are normally used for your graphics card, the X16 slot you install, whatever graphics card you put into your machine. However, X570 boards such as this can split those 16 lanes between the first and the second slot. If you will notice, I have a nice dual M.2 card here on the table, also provided by MSI. I wish they sold them. They don't. They bundle these with some of their high-end motherboards. This particular one came out of a previous generation godlike board, but this is a dual M.2 adapter that allows you to put two 4X devices on a single 8X slot. In the benchmarks today, you're going to see chipset benchmarks and CPU benchmarks on these drives. Now, this adapter originally came out with PCI Express 3. However, I did check with Crystal Disk Info, I verified they were working, and yes, when both of these PCI Express 4 drives were installed on this adapter, they were running at, 4, at uh, PCI Express Gen 4 on that second slot. It is also worth noting that when you install this, it drags the, the graphics card down to eight lanes. That does not seriously impact performance. Eight lanes is enough. It's, PCI Express is not currently a bottleneck for most graphics cards, so that's not a serious concern. 
And frankly, if bandwidth is important to you, well, maybe we should be talking about the high-end desktop platforms. But putting that issue aside, do note that it does lower your graphics card down to eight lanes. You also have to have a motherboard that does something called bifurcation. This will not directly run two M.2 drives on any board. You have to have a motherboard where you can go into the BIOS and tell the second PCI Express slot to split into two 4X slots, effectively creating two virtual slots out of one. This board will do that. In fact, this board will also bifurcate the first slot to 8X8X or to four 4X slots. Although if you used it that way, you couldn't use the second slot because it would be putting them all on the first. And that sort of configuration doesn't really make any sense because you need a video card of some kind. But putting that issue aside, it does at least support that in the BIOS. So it's worth noting that lower end motherboards won't support this sort of configuration. But who's buying $75 motherboards to buy two of these drives and put them into RAID on an adapter card? Probably nobody. In fact, I'm willing to bet that the vast majority of people doing this will install them on the M.2 slots on the board. Now here's an interesting configuration thought. You can put one drive on the first slot, which goes directly to the CPU, and the second drive on the second slot, which goes to the chipset except you can't boot that configuration. So that could be a data drive, but then what's your boot drive? On the third M.2 slot going through the chipset? So now your boot drive is competing with your RAID config? Yeah, that's a terrible idea. So for all of you thinking, well, there's the solution, just split them, yeah, no, that's horrible, don't do that. Your boot drive should be on the first M.2 slot, full stop, no questions whatsoever. You don't want that competing with all the other devices in your system that need bandwidth. So you're left with the option of putting two drives on the two M.2 slots or putting them on a riser card or not using two drives in RAID, but that's a, we'll talk about whether or not it's worth it at the end of the video. And with that short, sweet explanation out of the way, let's get to the benchmarks, but a quick reminder, links in the video description below take you to Amazon and Newegg for all the drives talked about here today. If you use those links when you shop at no extra cost to you, it supports the channel and helps us stay independent, bringing you honest and forthright reviews. Your support is greatly appreciated. On with the benchmarks. The first chart is going to be the sequential transfer test, Q depth of 32, thread count of 1. We are showing you the original results from when I tested these three drives originally, along with the new tests on the chipset and CPU lanes. The red bar is a single Aorus 4.0 NVMe drive by itself. The orange bar next to it are two of them in RAID 0 on the chipset lanes. This is the second and the third M.2 slot on the motherboard. The yellow bar is on the CPU lanes. The yellow bar is with both drives installed on that riser card that I showed you on the second PCI Express X16 slot that's electrically 8 and it's bifurcated to 4x4 in the motherboard BIOS so they're running directly to the CPU. Notice the dramatic difference in performance between chipset lanes and CPU lanes when it comes to sequential transfer rate. The first thing some people might say is, hold on a second here, how can two drives in RAID 0 striped across possibly not be any faster in read speed on the CPU lanes and actually be that much slower on the chipset lanes? I understand, but I've actually tested these in the past with two Samsung 970 Evos and found that two drives together are not always faster than one. Sometimes they're slower. Of course, every drive is going to be a bit different. We'll get to the randoms here in a second. Notice the write speed is dramatically improved. On the write speed, a single drive is 4.5 gigabytes per second. Two drives on the chipset is 6.3 gigabytes per second, and two drives on the CPU lanes is nearly double at 8.2 gigabytes per second. So the write speed is showing the improvement, but the read speed really doesn't. Moving on to 4K random read and write, Q depth of 32, thread count of 1. We see pretty much the same thing we did the last time we looked at these drives. The performance evens out across the board. Notice that a single drive is faster than the RAID 0 drives in either configuration. There's an overhead in doing software striping. These drives are set up striped within Windows. And so it, frankly, with random performance, doesn't really make any difference, even with a Q depth of 32. Reversing the principle, lowering Q depth to 8, but increasing thread count to 8, 
also doesn't do anything for these drives. They just don't care. Reading, writing, a single drive is a bit faster. Putting the two drives together gets you twice as much space on a single drive letter. It does, of course, obviously spread out the reads and writes, but it doesn't actually give you much in terms of performance. And finally, Q depth of one, thread count of one, the real world normal situation that most of you are gonna find yourself in most of the time. Yes, occasionally if you're updating a lot of things or doing a lot of things at once, if you're a super heavy user, you'll go a bit beyond this. But regardless of which random test you look at, it doesn't really make any difference to performance. I was asked this question multiple times during the original review of these Gigabyte Aura's PCI Express 4 drives, and I get asked quite often, well, why can't I just raid my drives and make them faster? Because it doesn't make them faster. It makes the sequential number look pretty, sort of, kind of, depending on which test you look at. It doesn't do anything for performance. RAID 0 is really pointless for SSDs. Buy a larger SSD. That Intel drive is a two terabyte drive and costs a whole lot less than two of any of these one terabyte drives do. RAID 0 for SSDs is one of the most pointless things ever. There is almost certainly a corner case out there. There's gonna be somebody in the comments below who says, yes, but I have this one special situation where it really helped me out. Great, wonderful. The two of you in the back can sit down. For the 99.9% .9 of the rest of you, RAID 0 doesn't do anything other than give you a drive twice as large that simply makes accessing it a little bit easier. It doesn't help you with performance in the real world. It doesn't even help you with synthetic benchmarks other than sequential transfer rates, except not really. Notice that the read speed on the chipset lanes was worse with two drives than it was with one. It is not this wonderful, well, I'll just put two drives together and suddenly get more performance. I get asked this question all the time, well, why can't I just raid them? Because it doesn't do anything. That's not how RAID works. RAID puts the drives together and stripes the data and increases sequential transfer rate, except, as you noticed, not if they're competing with resources on the chipset, and this is not really a solution on the consumer platform. I actually do RAID SSDs. I have four 2 terabyte 660Ps on my Threadripper machine. That is eight terabytes of space. I have them on a, a M, ASUS M.2 HyperCard. That is not for performance. They, they run fine all by themselves. That's to give me a single eight terabyte scratch space for all the video editing I do for YouTube. The fact that they're rated means nothing. It's just simplicity for installation. If they offered an eight terabyte NVMe M.2 drive, I would just get one and put it in and not bother with the RAID. It'd be much simpler. But I do that because I want the extra space. But for the 99.9% .9 of you watching this, buy the largest drive you can afford, which honestly, in my opinion, still remains the two terabyte uh, 660p from Intel. For $185, that is the screaming value up here. I have multiple of those, not only in my content creation machine, but I have two different machines where that's the boot drive. And I also use it as the game drive for all of the benchmarks on this. The boot drive on this on my test bench is actually a Samsung 970 Evo 500 gig drive. But the data drive where all the games are installed is a two terabyte 660p that's installed on my test bench. My previous test benches had SATA two terabyte SSDs, but the NVMe is nice, makes game updating a little bit faster. It's not a huge difference, but it's very convenient because it installs on the motherboard as opposed to having to have a separate drive and a separate cable. Now, when I did these benchmarks, now that I've said that, some of you are gonna say, wait a minute, I took that drive off to do the benchmarks. I don't need the game drive on, so I took that drive off to do these installations and do all these tests. But normally, the game drive is on the second M.2 slot on this board. One final thought. Everything I've said today about the pointlessness of RAID 0 for SSDs applies to NVMe and SATA drives. This doesn't get any better if you do it on SATA drives versus NVMe drives. It also doesn't get any better if you use hard drives. Putting four hard drives together in RAID 0 gives you wonderful sequential transfer rates, but it really doesn't do anything for random performance. That's not what RAID does. And of course, RAID really wasn't meant for RAID 0 in the first place. It was meant for data redundancy, but that's a separate conversation. And for those of you curious about the other RAID levels, that's not what this video was about. This video is about performance and testing. And if there's interest, let me know down below and maybe we'll do some coverage of other RAID levels, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, at some point in the future. In any case, thank you all so much for watching and I will see all of you next time.